would like a man who is educated, mm -hmm. um, enterprising, mm -hmm. and ambitious. So you wouldn't mind if he was poor? That kind of man is never poor. <laughs> Hey y'all, this video is going to be a quickie, but don't worry, I'm also currently editing a longer movie analysis that will be uploaded next week or the week after. This is sort of an impromptu, intuited message, and since it's been a while since I've uploaded, I figured I might as well go ahead and put this out. Now, a disclaimer, I'm not a dating advice channel per se but I do have some experience and perspective that I think would help y'all to avoid mistakes I've made. So I was perusing one of my dating apps when I came across this profile and it just reminded me of the other video I did on the age of Aquarius and the dusty men who are making attempts to manipulate newly spiritual women. And I say newly spiritual because a more experienced woman is going to peep the BS and will generally have a stronger intuition to aid her. But I wanted to sort of expand on that topic and analyze the red flags I'm seeing in this profile so that hopefully you will be able to hone your discernment on your own level up journeys. Feminine women will always be attractive to men and as such we will attract all types of men good and bad so it's important for us to go over these guys with the finest of fine tooth combs. The first red flag that caught my attention was this guy's username and his tagline. If you're in the spiritual community or getting into it, you're bound to hear words like light bearer, light worker, star seed, star child, indigo child, rainbow child, even empath. Now, these words are actually serious titles used to describe individuals who believe themselves to be here on earth with an important soul mission that involves genuinely helping people. This particular website is seeking arrangements. At its best, it is a dating service for sugar daddies. At its worst, it's an online brothel. So for him to be an older guy with this username and tagline, He's basically trying to convey an aura of a spiritual teacher and mentor, which is definitely outside of the norm on this website. Then if you take a look at his description, he puts an emphasis on an emotional connection and then in way too many words says there must be a connection for the relationship to progress. And I mean, duh. <laughs> but the real kicker is this line. If I am inspired to be generous, when I'm financially able, then I am happy to express generosity in that way. Remember, this is a sugar daddy dating website. Being financially generous should be an automatic and implicit given. And even the non-sugar daddy providers are of course only generous to the women they care about. So that if I'm inspired to be generous tells me he isn't normally. If a man is in a relationship with a woman, he is automatically going to be generous unless that is not of his character. But the real kicker is him throwing in that when I'm financially able bit. And then if you take a look at his self-reported salary and net worth, it is starting to become clear that he is a stevia daddy. I could play devil's advocate and say, oh, he underreported his salary to weed out the hot girl gold diggers, but it must then be pointed out that that would make him less desirable. Again, this is not a dating website meant for financially frugal men. It is for men who want to exchange their exceptional provisionary capabilities for feminine companionship. So it is in their best interest to have a higher salary and net worth. If he were disguising this key facet of his person, that means he is not trying to impress the women. And if he is not trying to impress the women, that means he is relying on the women to impress him. Which means the relationship he desires will be more of a role reversal or faux 50-50 
actually 80-20 type of dynamic, which has short-term benefits for the man, but long-term detriments for both parties. This is the entire plotline of Coming to America, so make sure you watch my analysis on that. Physical attractiveness and emotional magnetism are a part of his requirements, which means he is expecting feminine softness, and yet what he is supposed to bring to the table, the masculine material gifting, is seen as a conditional option. Establishing an emotional connection with someone is work. Being an attractive woman takes maintenance and comfort that is afforded with money. These types want traditional femininity without having to uphold the mantle of manhood and traditional masculinity, and that is grossly unfair. Another parallel is the men who put seeking fit, feminine, and friendly, or something along those lines in their bios. If they're a masculine provider, they are automatically going to look for and attract those types of women. So they don't need to spell that out. So this reveals that they probably aren't as much of a provider as they would have us believe. Throwing those words out there is a gaslighting tactic that is meant to make you think, oh, well, if he wants feminine, he must be masculine, bamboozling a naive, sweet woman without a backbone into partaking in a non-reciprocal, imbalanced relationship. This is part of an ongoing problem of men who will use word salad and buzzwords to basically love bomb more naive women into thinking they aren't like the other boys. Once upon a time, it was, oh, I'm a good listener, I have a big heart, I'm a feminist. Nowadays, it's more words from the spiritual and feminine level up communities i.e. soulmate, twin flame, light bearer, I want you resting comfortably in your femininity, I'm an alpha. This is why it's so important to think with your head and instincts instead of your heart or love box when it comes to dating. The truth is, men a lot of times show and tell us exactly who they are we just aren't always receptive because we're too busy idolizing them. As always, that's not an attack. It's coming from experience. My worst relationship, literally that ex told me, oh, I don't break up with women. I typically just try to push them away so that they break up with me. I've learned the hard way so that hopefully you won't have to. And reminder, potential should be the last factor in your judgment of a man as a possible mate. Prospective earning capacity means nothing if his current character is in the gutter. Money doesn't change people, it simply magnifies who they already are. With this case in particular, I think he's also revealing a larger problem of people who over-spiritualize the world to the point that their head is so far up their own ass, it's lodged in the clouds. The thing is, you can be spiritual and to an extent, to an extent, materialistic. Detaching from the material plane simply means that no matter what is going on in the present, because you have that link to your higher self and your spirit guides, your future is still set in heaven, whether that's a heaven on earth or in a higher dimension. The point is, you know you're going to be good in the long term. For example, let's say you have a job, but the job makes you miserable. Sure. You're making money and that's nice, but this job is actually draining you. For one reason or another, you eventually get fired from that job. Now, you can get even more bent out of shape and worry about how you're going to pay your bills, etc., etc., or you can detach from the material and set your sights heavenward and recognize that that job was killing you slowly so losing it is now forcing you to make the space for a better one. Again, 
I've been there, bawling my eyes out because I just got fired from a job that I was always complaining about. But when you really put it into the perspective of, okay, I am crying over a company that literally doesn't care about me, you have to sit down with yourself and ask, am I going to continue to cry and feel sorry for myself? Or am I going to recognize that I have the opportunity to search for and invite in something better? Spoiler alert, I always landed on two feet and found something better. And you can apply that same logic to the losers who break your heart. Sure, mourn, cry, whatever. You're human and you have emotions. But it's important for you to recognize that you are always better off without these soul-sucking entities that aren't facilitating the manifestation of your best self. Rejection is often protection. You don't have to feel guilty for wanting nice things. Nice things provide comfort and why wouldn't your spirit guides want you to be comfortable? Take a look at underdeveloped countries or even here in the states in the hood to see what a lack of material abundance gets you. Being poor isn't fun and you aren't winning any brownie points by stifling your earning capacity and you also don't need to feel guilty for wanting the absolute best the world has to offer. These earthly pleasures are here for us to enjoy. This profile is a reminder that there are going to be men who are going to try their hardest to get access to a woman's mind, body, and irreplaceable time for as little as possible, all under the guise of being spiritual and ascended. Newsflash, all rich men aren't evil, and all broke men aren't just. He's telling you in so many ways that he isn't like the other boys, but remember, we want masculine men. Watch out for these types who claim to be so, quote, godly and put the emphasis on the intangible or even claim to have all this esoteric knowledge that they want to share with you. The truth is, if they unlock the secrets to the universe, that means that they'd, number one, be living well off and securely because they know how to utilize the occult to manipulate the material with a fundamental understanding of capitalism. And number two, be educated on the nature of masculinity as it relates to feminine energy and understand it is a man's biological function and spiritual duty to fulfill that role. I'll be the first to admit that there are definitely a lot of things I don't know but I know what I do know, and thus have a responsibility to share that information so it reaches those who need it. I'll leave some links to channels that have more comprehensive and strategic dating advice for women, and if you know of more, drop them in the comments and I'll add them to the pinned comment. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see y'all in the next video.